feel the blood creeping up from the heathens Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gon' feed them If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon I got eyes in the back of my head, I'm seeing Take me for granted and you know I'm leaving I'ma take what's mine with the webs I'm weaving I could take this crap from sea what is going on everybody welcome back to the podcast uh different setup today i'm gonna be live on location I'm not live i'm re-recording on my iphoneo here but um different setup here if you're used to watching or listening on the audio app i suggest going over to bobbydizzle.com and watching this on youtube it may be more conducive to video but nonetheless uh Please subscribe on YouTube anyway. Please subscribe on the audio apps. We're on, uh, I said we're, it's just me. We're on uh, iTunes, Google Podcast, I think iHeartRadio, especially Spotify and iTunes, big ones. And of course, YouTube as well. I'm now called the Caffeinated Cryptid with Bobby Dizzle, just a field note there. But enough about me today, I'm just uh, I'm doing this all in one take. So this is going to be a little choppy, a little fun. This is, this is fun, though. This is real fun. Today, I'm in my hometown of Scottsboro, Alabama. Not technically there yet. I'm out in the sticks because we just got through eating Sunday dinner, had a big fish fry. Um, but I'm headed into Scottsboro. I'm almost in the city limits. Today I'm going to Bedlam on Houston Street down by Unclaimed Baggage, meeting the lead investigator for the Bedlam. Uh, oh, it's, not, it's a Bedlam, Par- Bar- Bedlam Paranormal Researchers Association investigators. They're, uh, I'll probably butcher that name. I'm very sorry, Jared. I'm meeting Jared Selvage there. I looked at the name. Of, I looked at the name of the organization before I left the house, and I forgot it because my camera died, and I'm very stressed. The camcorder I brought with me that I've had for years, to all my other vlogging, died on the way out here. So, bear with me. But it's Bedlam. It's a haunted house. It's called Bedlam in Scottsboro. If you Google Bedlam Scottsboro, and of course their organiz- their uh, website's going to be in the description. So, no big deal. But it's a haunted warehouse. It's been there for close to a hundred years, if not more. Uh, we're going to. We're going to review the history of it. We're going to talk about, you know, what they've seen recently. There's some excellent EVPs and some um, pictures and people get touched and everything. They do they, they do an actual uh, haunted house for Halloween, like a hell house, where it's just kind of scary. People jump out, you know, the kind you go to. It's fun. And, they, and it's actually haunted. And so it's like a double whammy. I'm excited to go into it. It's uh, 90 degrees, according to my dashboard, in the middle of the day in Alabama in July or June. Not July yet, and so it's liable to be all kinds of fun. If I get touched, it'll either be a copperhead, a mosquito, or a dead person. You know, you know the top three. Summer in Alabama, but needless to say, I'm excited. It's my first on location. I'm probably going to ramble, I'm gonna fumble through it. I just bear bear with me. It's going to be a good time. This is uh, the first of many on location podcasts I'm going to do. So uh, just uh, let me let me fumble through this and beat on my craft and correct it and do it right, because you got to start somewhere, am I right? So without further ado, I'm about to be there. Scottsboro's not a big place. I still know I've only been driving about, I've only been recording about three minutes. So, but without further ado, I'm about to pull up, about to meet Jared. So uh, hang on for the ride and bear with me, and don't forget to subscribe, share, on uh, iTunes, Spotify. YouTube, all at bobbydizzle.com, and the Bedlam link to where I'm going is in the description. It's the haunted house called Bedlam in Scottsboro. Thank you. This is our main lobby. Uh, during the off season, we have a few different things that we do. We have music hall. Uh, we have, you know, recently we had a wrestling event here, and we've got a few other events mm-hmm. coming up. Scaven- a citywide scavenger hunt, a hide and seek event. Uh, uh, we've got one that we're planning out right now where you get some free tickets to the Bedlam Haunted Attraction, basically just by taking mm-hmm. a picture with one of our haunt actors out on the street corner here. Um, besides that, one of the other things we do is we do different types of paranormal investigations. Mm-hmm. You can either do the ghost camp class, where I will actually teach you everything you need to know to be a paranormal investigator. And it teach you the difference between a paranormal investigator and a ghost hunter. Mm, crazy okay. person. Yeah, there is a difference. So uh, I've heard the difference is the ghost hunters come in and uh, stir it up and leave. More or less, <laughs> ghost hunters usually they'll go in and they uh, they will provocate. They sometimes mess with occult things. Uh, 
they're there just literally to stir up activity and have a good time. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. But a true paranormal investigator goes in there, they take base readings, they take uh, everything they can possibly think of to debunk an area. Where a ghost hunter is trying to say, yes, there are ghosts here, a paranormal investigator is trying to say, no, there's not. Oh, yeah, it's trying to make take all the evidence and say, try to do the best they can to be a cautious skeptic. Right. Yeah, that's how, that's how I like to do things. Like, what, what is it? That's clearly a deer in the woods. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's the way I teach my classes. I teach you how to be a professional paranormal okay. investigator versus just a standard ghost hunter. I mean, well, there's been a, they had a uh, overnight event here last night where all the actors just kind of had like a slumber party. And they said that all night long, especially in the back where we're going to go in a minute, mm -hmm. uh, they heard stuff being thrown, there was footsteps, there were shadow people walking all over the place. Like it got super active last night. I wasn't here, I was actually doing an investigation at another location. But, uh, I'll tell you what's weird. I walked in here and I don't feel it now, but I felt cold as soon as I walked in. You know, usually it's really hot. Yeah, I felt when I walked over by you over there, I don't know if there's AC on, it could just be me, but I felt chillier. Oh, it's going to get real good when we get in the back where the actual Ooh. stuff happens. Now, this area, we do have activity all throughout the building. This particular building is around 150 years old, the one we're standing in. Really? Uh, oh, yeah. It's been here since, uh, it was a TVA garage to start off with back in the early 19. 19- 17 area. I remember when it was a Ford Motor Company. Yeah, that was actually running Ford. When it was Harvest. Yeah. Um, so right over here where the red curtains are, mm -hmm. that's our theater. That's where I also teach my classes. That area, sometimes you'll get EMF spikes. Uh, occasionally we'll get some stuff on the spirit box. Uh, back through the doorway, uh, we used to have a axe throwing room, and now we use it more as just kind of storage and you know, places to rest and sleep. We're going to do something else with it soon. Um, of course, we've got our main lobby. Ticket booth's right over here. Hi. This is also the entrance whenever we're doing our actual haunt. It's pretty neat. I'm just going to, I think what I'm going to do is us talking to walk around, kind of do like a, since we've already seen each other, no one wants to see us much anymore. Right. <laughs> I, may, so, I may follow you like this. That's fine. It's behind the scenes, fourth wall. This is this is me. Because I went to college for do, to do video editing, and here I am doing it. Really? <laughs> yeah. I wanted to, but. It didn't really turn out the way it was. That's neat. Oh man, look at that. Here we go. Oh, this yeah. might work out just fine. Well, like I said, it gets, it gets on dark towards the back, but if you're using that camera, then it should be okay. If not, I can put on the flashlight. Yeah, I mean, we got to. So this is our entrance. We actually had, last season, two different, we had an entrance and exit coming in the same direction. We had a big curtain right here where this line is on the floor. Mm -hmm. And you would go in this side and come out this side. Now this year we're not doing that. This year, uh, this is going to be blocked off, and it's going to be a one way in, one way out. But you're going to come in this side. That's hilarious. Yeah, liquor from Resident Evil. Ah. Got some of our Han actors here getting ready for the next season, getting their rooms prepared. I bet this place is going to be cool. Oh, it's hmm. awesome. Now. Keep in mind, unlike standard haunts, this is an extreme haunt. So we do grab you, we will move you around, we'll throw you about a little bit. We'll get pretty aggressive, um, but we don't hurt anybody. It's not like that place in McCamey, Tennessee. McCamey Manor? Yeah. yeah. No, we don't, we don't the Ripper teeth actually out. torture anybody. <laughs> Why don't you step here? This was one of our trick elevators. Uh, at one point, it had doors on there, and it would move around and shake and light up. There's like a TV right here, and it would look like you're going down or up. And now we just kind of... That's insane. I bet that is kind of crazy if you weren't ready for we're it. We're actually getting rid of this. Um, the hydraulics messed up on it. We're going to get rid of it. Just more or less because it's a safety concern going up and down this. Oh, yeah. Watch your step in here. This was actually my room last season. We got water. And it did. Every time it rains, it floods. And so we're working on that. Like I said, it's a very old building, and we're having to constantly repair the roof. As soon as we got it repaired recently, a tornado hit and yeah. tore it off. So I forgot about that. This area Wait. is also a hot spot for paranormal activity. So we can set up a REM pod right here, and we can hang back for a few minutes, and that thing will just start going off. It's like right in there. Yeah, just right through here. I have myself have been doing a little hunt, just doing my thing, turn around and see someone just standing right here. And, yeah. it's, and it wasn't like one of those peripheral visions of like directly looking. 
And as soon as I walked towards it, I was like, hey, what's up? Took off running and it was like a flash of light, <laughs> gone. And I thought it was one of the actors. When I chased it down, it just disappeared. Um, and that happens so often. So that was Cassidy's room with my character. Thank you. Give a profile of it. That's yeah. pretty neat. I didn't know why this was here. I've been driving by this place for 40 years. <laughs> well, before it was Bedlam, it was known as a place called Harvest. Yeah, yeah, I remember Harvest. My, I told my daughter it wasn't haunted. And then I had to come back last week. I mean, you know, I was wrong about that point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, the previous owner, he, um, without giving a whole lot of de details, he did a lot of bad things to some people here. And... Uh, is facing some court charges actually. Mm, and so we're that. under different management now. We changed it from Harvest to Bedlam. And we've got a more, I don't know, I wouldn't say family friendly, but mm -hmm. um, we don't do any questionable activity. Yeah, be, being from the area, I've heard the stories of what you're talking about now. Yeah. I'll let my audience do their own research. Yeah. yeah. I heard about it through the, through the grapevine. It's also a little flooded in here. Now, this is an actual coffin. Uh, this is one that I believe was just donated. And we have people laying it, and you can actually feel, uh, you know, typically when you get into something like this, you're gonna warm up, and it's gonna mm -hmm. get kind of toasty in there. For some reason, it actually gets cold. I'm out. Especially your people, <laughs> have people have their feet touched. We've had people's hair moved just by laying in it. And some people will get real ballsy, and they'll lay in there, close it up, and stay in there for a good 15, 20 minutes. Is this the coffin from the Taylor Swift, uh... <laughs> it's, it's me video? Uh, maybe she had a replica? Yeah. <laughs> so this was all known as our body bag room. We had like body bags just hanging off. And mm -hmm. uh, there have been many occasions where we would walk through here and these things would just be swaying for absolutely no reason. Sure, but I didn't wear the flip flops I was going to wear. Yeah. <laughs> We're working on it. Oh, I'll pay. You're in a haunted house. What are you doing? Yeah, I think it's good aesthetic, but yeah. you know, it's also, we, we got to think about safety. I like the way it sounds. It sounds like, like just shit's about to hit the fan. Oh, yeah. So that was that other one was my room last season. This is going to be my room this season. This is our security room. And it room. does have a wraparound, so there's like two different ways to get in and out of this. This is a working TV. We're actually fixing to set up some security cameras and wire them throughout the haunt. That way my character can watch everybody. It's kind of creepy, but uh, we're going to have real fun with this. Not only is it good for safety, you know, if something happens, because you do have aggressive people coming here. And uh, so I can monitor everybody, but also... What's creepier than thinking you're being watched? Yeah. Knowing you're being watched. Are you going to have like the uh, mad scientist goggles on and stuff? That would be cool. I've actually got a whole character. Uh, I'm going to use the same character I had last year. And um, he's just a, he's a psychological type person. Oh, yeah. Uh, His voice is kind of like Pennywise. Oh, and then when he laughs, he's <laughs> So. Wasn't ready for that. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. This was our morgue. Um... This room is also an active room. Uh, that mirror right there Definitely a morgue. is weird. This mirror will give off up to a 10 milligal reading on a K2 meter. And you would think, oh, it's got electricity. And this is just a no, just, old medicine box. It is. There's no wiring. to the wall. Yeah, there's no reason that should be given off the EMF reading. Uh, we've had two wheelchairs in here at one point. One of the wheelchairs actually moved from right here and then moved all the way over here on its own. And I, I was in the other room and I was like, Jared, Jared get in here. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, we get EMF readings in here. We get spirit box in here. Uh, Do you own a rim pod, like for real? Yes. How much How much did you give for it? I'm about to ask. I so here's the crazy thing. Stupid expensive. Me, me and my wife, we kind of split our costs on that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, they're usually around $150. Okay, I saw one for $4,000. I'm like, there's no way. No. No, um, after we get our tour, I will get my equipment out and you can see everything right Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, the only, I have one piece of equipment that I don't have with me, and that's just my thermal imaging camera. Uh, I have a thermal imaging camera with me, but it's just not the big one. This was a secretary's area that would kind of get you prepared for going into the morgue, because originally you would go the other direction. We're actually doing this backwards. It's crazy to remember all this. I'm already lost. Well, this place is amazing. Like, <laughs> when you walk it every day for a month and a half, you, and then do tours through here all the time doing ghost stuff. If I didn't know the cardinal directions I'm supposed to be going in from living here, I'd, be, <laughs> I'd never. I just know go south. I hit the hit Broad Street or Willow Street. Yeah, it's kind of it's, it's one of those just hidden in plain sight type deals. Yeah. So this area, there's actually a hidden door right here, or there was, 
and the people that would be in this next room would come in here, go around, and come back out. And they would crawl, because we had some really good contortionists. Um, these rooms, as far as paranormal-wise, not a lot happens. You'll get the sense of being followed, you'll hear footsteps behind you occasionally. But other than that, not really anything. Uh, we're gonna go left, and then we'll turn around and come back through here again and go right. <laughs> So this is just a little storage area. This room, or hallway, it had a few different things going on in it. It had like skulls and chains and all sorts of stuff hanging from the walls. Wasn't uh, really anything special. Uh, this area originally didn't have anything, but now we're gonna turn this into kind of a false chapel type of deal, where uh, one of our actresses is gonna dress up as a corrupted preacher and chase people around. And this is a big dude. I mean, this guy's like six foot four. Mm. He used to be a wrestler, like he's reminds, reminds me of that church in Last of Us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> With that false preacher. This room was a very, very active room. We originally it was called the dollhouse. There was baby like porcelain dolls and Barbie dolls and just you name it, just hung across the line, just scattered everywhere. This van was moved forward a little bit. Um very active room in the paranormal. We have gotten just direct communication through K2, uh, spirit box, RAM pods, EVPs. We've seen shadow figures uh, through laser grid. I mean, you name it, it's happened. Um, all of our demonic activity happened in this area where people just started feeling weird. They felt influenced. They had people scratched on their stomachs, felt stabbing pains, massive headaches out of nowhere. Not sure if it's tied with the pedo van or not. Yeah, I was going to say, and there's also a creepy ass man here. <laughs> not sure if it's tied with that or not, but for some reason, this room is just dark. Uh, it is, it is a, it's a very convenient van there. Yeah. Uh, before I started doing my investigations, people would come in here, and they did. They messed with Ouija boards, they did uh, uh, different occult type activities. And who knows what they conjured up? When I started working here and uh, started doing investigations, I made a very strict rule, none of that. This was one of the doctor's rooms, and if you actually, if, you, if you're good at chemistry, you can look on the walls at some of these chemical compounds, and these are actual drug compounds. So I think one of them's meth, one of them's heroin. Uh, no, that top right one's meth. Yeah. <laughs> That's so from Breaking Bad. Yeah, there's a, there's a few different ones. I honestly just don't know. I used to, but I don't know. Breaking Bad, it's a, that chemical compound's like in the... Everybody knows it. Yeah, the logo. So this area, um, we can go around it. This is like a uh, the original preacher area. There's upside down crosses just all over the place in that room. Luckily, this is a two way street. Just through the jailhouse door. Yeah. And there was a black light in there, so you know it wasn't completely dark. The closer we get to the back, it's going to start smelling a lot like paint because, like I said, they're, they're working on it. They're trying to black out the windows. One of the areas is going to be a, a nyctophobia type room. This room, uh, me and a couple of friends worked on it for a few days. So this side had like grass and stuff on it, and there were snakes all over the wall hanging off the rafters. You can still see part of the tail. Uh, so they're just massive snakes everywhere. And this side had spiders. So you had two options. You either go down the spider hallway or the snake hallway. Nobody liked it. I'm taking spiders. Yeah. All day. I can step on the spider. This was Bob's room. Uh, the actual owner, Corey, he used this room and he had pictures of, of different things here, like just people who was beat up and bruised. He kind of had like a kidnapping type scene going on. Uh, he had tools all over this wall here. At one point, there was even a fake head of one of our actors. It was a silicone mold of one of our actors' heads. And it was photorealistic. It was creepy. Uh, this was a very hot spot room, and he would actually give people teeth. So he had a bunch of acrylic teeth that he would hand out to people. And it was also one of the coolest rooms because of that window. Hey, Willow Street in the background. Yeah. Now we're getting into some more of the Bob's place. Uh, yeah. Happens to be my other name. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> this is the dog kennel. This is the one they're going to turn into the Nyctophobia, but it originally had big dog kennel cages here. And. Um, Ooh, it is painting back here. Yeah. <laughs> Spray paint. Uh, this area, 
it has a lot of history of paranormal activity, but it doesn't, I don't have any evidence. Every time I've came back here, I've never caught anything of any sort. But there are stories upon stories of things happening. So, I don't know. When we get done, all I plan to do is ask you some of the history of the place. Oh, yeah. I was thought about just doing virtual and then coming here. I'm like, it's no fun. I don't walk, I walk through. I'm glad you suggested it because I was, I hadn't, I hadn't prepared anything. I'm like, okay, I'll just go over there and do it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you got a question, you can just interrupt me at any time. I'll, oh, yeah. It's fine. I'm having uh, fun hearing this Netflix special of a building I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's what we think about, yeah. This is Darla's uh, hallway. So she's kind of a sadistic clown and she'll actually run and she has the uh, knee pads on and she'll slide across the floor and at you to scream, raise her sharp teeth. Oh, like a character? Yeah. Yeah. Every character here is custom made. There are no copyright characters. So you come through, you're not going to see Pennywise, you're not going to see Freddy, Jason, and Yeah. Every character is custom. Very American Horror Story-ish. Yeah. That's what that reminds me of. And every room is custom designed around those characters. Everybody works their own room and designs it the way they want it. This was our uh, kind of a Satan's hole. Yeah. We had someone here that was a Satanist, had a uh, black cloak on. There's, you know, pentagrams and stuff like that. Which, if you know anything about actual witchcraft, the pentagram's really not as relevant as you think. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, me, I study all sorts of different ancient languages and stuff. And just to be on the safe side, I put Adam Speak or Enochian on certain parts of the wall just to. You know, put a little bit of divinity in here. <laughs> because the way the way that stuff works is it's not necessarily what you're putting on the ground or what you're doing, it's the intention you put behind it. This area is dark. This is where's our jail cells. I'll uh, put a little light in here. Okay. So that would really give us time. Yeah. <laughs> we had just big jail cells right here and uh, two of them that actually opened. The three right there are closed. We had the sliding in here. We had one actor that had an actual taser. She would run out and chase people with a taser. <laughs> Didn't actually do anything to them. And then we had another one here. That's funny that the, they use a taser now because you know back when I was little it was always a chainsaw without a blade. Oh, we got plenty of those. Oh, too. you got those? <laughs> yeah, we got chainsaws. <laughs> it's like the evolution of the haunted house. I chase, I chase everybody with a, uh, a sickle. Oh, yeah. Oops, sorry, guys. Hey. Oh, you're coming through. How are you doing? That was Graham. He's our supervisor. Okay, Graham. Glad you saw him, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this area here is also one of our highly active areas. This is where we also get some more and more malevolent activity. Um, in one of the rooms that we, uh, I think we skipped it, but it was a kind of a family-style room. We was doing an investigation here one night, and... There's only, there was a uh, five of us here. Out of nowhere. But if you notice how it kind of just continues to shake and resonate, the difference with what we heard is that you heard the giant bang, but as soon as it started, it stopped. So it's like and something dampened it. Something like grabbed it and dampened it. And you know, I mean, if you, it, no one, no matter how big you are, is going to be able to dampen that. So. We spent a good half an hour to an hour trying to debunk why this thing shook in the first place and it just stopped. We thought maybe there was a possum. We had a possum in there. <laughs> maybe it was uh, you know, just an animal of some sort or a, that thing uh, just a keeps person going. walking through. That thing just keeps going. It just keeps going <laughs> and it just stopped. I've actually got a video of that event. I think I think that was one of the ones you were discussing with me on the uh, messenger, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So on the on the Paranormal Manifesto YouTube channel, on uh, it's, it's called Bedlam Hauntings Episode Two. Um, you can do a section about halfway through that uh, has that. This room is our poltergeist room. So we had a haunt actor in here that does things, but during our investigation, I was walking by, and this is another one of those spent half an hour trying to debunk mm -hmm. it and could not figure it out. We had these tubes right here on this couch. Everybody's in front, I'm in the back of the line. I'm walking through, I'm about right here as far as I know. Walking through and as soon as I get to about right here, I think just about two of them go flying across the room. I've got video of that too. We thought, okay, maybe it was me walking past, maybe I brushed the couch and mm -hmm. they just rolled off. I mean, even if I aggressively brush against this, it's not gonna fall. 
maybe it just happened to be no one noticed it and uh, it was sticking out and I walked across so no well, that ain't working either and we, we tried it and tried it and tried it so many different scenarios yeah, that's a and we could not figure out for the life of us why this thing took off across the ground. And there was no one behind me because I was at the back of the line. So we're actually going to go back that way. <laughs> I wasn't ready for my legs standing there. <laughs> <laughs> but even in this room, this is our cop car room. We've had people push. We've had people's hair pulled. We've had this whole cop car shift like someone sat in it and then no one be in there. Uh, this next season, this is going to be our exit. We're going to have like our gift shop and stuff in there. We're still cleaning it out. It's a disaster right now. This is an old bathroom. Not for nothing. When we were in that back room with the tubes, I got a headache right here real quick. Now it's going. Hmm. That's, could just be being dehydrated. Yeah, it is very <laughs> stuffy in here. And you would think with all this water, the humidity levels would be yeah. high, but it's really dry. Paint. That was so. weird. As soon as you started talking about that, my headache went, mm -mm. now it's gone. So this room, which is a disaster now, but it used to be open. This is a room that we have for Schizo the Clown, one of our actors. Schizo the Clown. He was known as the most aggressive and extreme haunt actor we had. And you can't really tell, but um, some of these holes in the wall is where he threw people through the wall. Um, Like he just got people and just... What was it? What, what kind of haunted house you say it was? A, uh, this is an extreme, extreme haunted, haunted house. So we will pick you up. We will grab you. We will pin you to the floors, the ground, or, you know, unless you specify, hey, I don't want my clothes dirty. You know, we'll, we'll respect you on that. But that's if you buy an extreme ticket. So we have the two different types. We have just the regular, where it's just, a, you know, standard, boo, I scared you. We won't touch you. And then you have the extreme for a $5 more, in which case we will go just ape shit on you. For five dollars more. For five dollars more. What a deal! You will become our victim. What a deal! Some people get that for free. Yeah. <laughs> Schizo the clown. Yep. And he's actually the uh, mascot. If you go to our Facebook page, it's just bad one. <laughs> hey. He is our uh, mascot. This front center clown. They've got an orange jumpsuit on. Yeah. You can just tell the energy back there is different. It is. It's, it is very different. I try. I try it's, not to get sucked. I try to take myself out of it, but you feel it. You're like, wow. Yeah, and then you come out here. As soon as you walk out the door, it just. Now, there's been a lot of things happen in this building, but there's also been a lot of things that happen outside the building. Uh, this is going to dive into the kind of the history part. Yeah. So right over there, where the uh, actual crossing is, where the road goes over the train track. Yeah kind of off to the left a little bit there was a murder suicide i don't know the names of the people i just know that it was a family and the uh the husband murdered his wife who was also pregnant the child survived but she did not and then right after he killed her he killed himself and that was right there now that wasn't that long ago no that was only a couple years ago i was gonna say i know that i remember when that happened yeah that was the dude i went to high school with right there I don't know the that's full right. full story, but I, that's what I was told. It was like a domestic dispute. They just went ape shit. Yeah. Now the uh, famous Scottsboro boys. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen too far from here. That was just right down the road. Um, you know, they traveled through this area and then the courthouse. There was a rumor that went around for a little while that the hanging was actually on the side of this building, but that was not true. That didn't happen. You know, me and uh, uh, Justin Lackey from Lackey Law Firm, mm -hmm. we're good buddies. Went to we went to Alabama together. Took a 400 level constitutional history class, hardest class you can imagine. Imagine the boredom. And, and one day, the only day he missed, the only day he missed in class, that was Scottsboro Boys Day in that class. And the, and the only time I ever raised my hand in that class, he spelled Scottsboro wrong. I'm like, hold the hell up. That's funny. Hold up, buddy. He spelled it with a B O R U G H. Um, did you want to have a separate clip for your history or just keep going? Yeah, if we, if, you st if we can do it just on this one, it's fine. Yeah, that's fine. So other than that right there, uh, if we go back in the building. Just move one file over, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, do some history talk. If you go up the stairs and around and right over here, we have like a little storage closet. 
Yep. And up above that, this when I had said earlier that this used to be a milk. Well, right here in the storage closet. Find the light switch. You can see this green uh, belt. A guy got caught up in this belt, got ripped to shreds. Woo! I bet. So we have uh, a little sure. bit of activity in and around this area, especially upstairs. And it's 150 years old. Is it just the back part that's that old, or the? Uh, so the back part's actually newer. Where the hunt is is a little bit newer. This building, all the part where the brick is here, that is the original building. And I actually have a picture of the original blueprint here. I know the part I've, I've been in before with the, uh, <clears throat> where the charity used to store things upstairs was in the middle part. Yeah. That old brick, that stuff's original. Okay. This is one of the blueprints I have that I managed to talk to the historian society. Little phone on phone? Yeah. Um, let's see. We're right here. This is that building right there. And then this building was separate. That, that was a whole different business at one point. And then they eventually connected them when they started doing other things. This blueprint is from 1927. So uh, right over here in the parking lot, there was, mm -hmm. which is next door, we had the, the car dealership. And then there was a hosiery mill right across the street of the tracks. Uh, they had the laundry mat. So back there where the haunt is, that used to be a laundry mat. Really? Yep. Um, there was a lady who had a heart attack in one of the bathrooms back there and died. Um, of course, all the more recent tragic things happened right up there. We have our office up there. Um, we're not going to walk up there just because the floor yeah. is it's, it's okay, but it has its moments. Um, let's see. We should do like a walking tour outside. Yeah, right. we can do, do a walking tour. Yeah. Just some B-roll, you know, in, in person B-roll and talk about it, even though it's about to storm. So I think last year they went through here and they actually painted the building black. The original plan was to paint the whole thing black, but uh, that's a lot of paint. Yeah, I was going to say, it must be new because when I turned the corner, I'm like, this is the same place. Yeah, they painted it black and it's got mixed reviews. They saw a red door and they wanted to paint it black, huh? Yeah. yeah, literally. Ding, 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 ding. Crazy. So one of the events we're going to be having soon is a, uh, like a little contest. It's going to happen every week until the haunt season opens on Jan September 22nd. Right at the end here, which we'll, we'll walk our way down that way, but uh, we're going to have one of the haunt actors stationed. And if you go on our Facebook page, there's some rules and stuff, but um, which I'll, I haven't posted it yet. Um, you take a picture with the haunt actor. You post it on the Bedlam page, Facebook page. You post it on your own Facebook page. And then you get two free tickets to the haunt. Let's just stop by the Lizzie Borden train facility. Yeah, that was the axe throwing room that we started to make, and uh, we just didn't get the marketing out for it. And it got business during the hot season, but outside the hot season, it just didn't do anything. This, we've cleared up, I think, three times. We have had it completely cleaned up, and it just grows right yeah. back. <laughs> it's North Alabama for you. Yeah. You get about three days of clean. You ever been to the Lizzie Borden house? You know anybody that has? Uh, I know a few people that has. I haven't. <laughs> I know Adam Began from Maine, obsessed with Stephen King. Yeah. Went there and he was supposed to be a part of a big group. Everybody else bailed but him. He had the whole house to himself. Oh, he, he said he slept naked in Lizzie Borden's bed. Oh, no. And I was touched all night. I bet. <laughs> That's the wildest story I've ever heard on my show. It's been a while since she had that kind of activity. Yeah, she's like, oh, who this? New, new, new axe, who this? And there's the haunted Gator gas station. Yeah. Home of haunted Matt Gibson. If you know, you know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what's crazy is we have this really historic building. It's got a lot of tragic history, but it's also got some really good things. Uh, 
really the only good thing was just some of the businesses and then our haunt that we try to bring our community together. We do different charity events, different community events. Um, about the only positivity to it. Um, but right down the street, not even, I think it's two blocks down, it's straight. On the right is the uh, Jackson County uh, Heritage Museum. And uh, you know, I've talked to them a few times, tried to dig up some history on them. In some of the paranormal stuff. Right here, Grim that we seen a minute ago, uh, he dresses up as Dr. Giggles, kind of a clown doctor. He'll stand right here on the street corner and wave people down and get them interested. <laughs> we just call him our, you know, our bedlam hooker. You don't never get shot at? Nope. <laughs> it's crazy. This is wild. It's gonna get stormy. Oh yeah, yeah. You can see the rain right there. Probably didn't yeah. get hit. Yeah. What I say? End up, end up a bedlam ghost. I, I to, wouldn't want to be a ghost here. There's a few places I wouldn't mind, but here, nothing. Like those Titanic ghosts that got new people. Hey, yeah. This is wild. Look at all, how crazy this looks. They're 111. Yeah. That's, that's the greatest aesthetic, aesthetic. With the busted windows and stuff, man. Oh, yeah. That's all natural, too. I know. We it's all that. natural. <laughs> Look at here's a, dead, here's a dead bird. Yeah, that happens a lot. <laughs> we get dead rodents and birds and stuff just surround the building. Which is like, okay. Yeah, that's not creepy. It's not an omen at all. It's not a. It's not a theme in multiple horror movies at all. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, it is crazy how many things just decided to pass away here. It's such a forgotten part of town, too. It is. I mean, you had the uh, the train depot right here, yeah. which way back in the day was just a booming place. I remember when I was little, when it was real decrepit and mm -hmm. falling apart. You drive by and the old man sitting out front. Yeah. They still they still have that open on yeah. Fridays. Um, I talked to her, the person who runs that. She's the one that got me all the blueprints for this building. We dug up a lot of the history. This is just now. I know he said something about going over like some of the equipment out here. Yeah. I have it all here in my trunk. <laughs> The haunted Honda. Haunted Honda, yeah, yeah. Actually, I named it Raven. The Casper Coupe. So I've got my security cameras. So these security cameras are going to go um, into the haunt. This right here is something my buddy uh, Vin got for me. This was called. I'll open this back up in a second. I won't get that on spoiler. You got a five-speed. Six. Real, real man. So this is a worky portable workstation. For anyone who's in the paranormal field or does a lot of traveling and needs oh. <laughs> I was gonna say we might have run. That's a sign right there, folks. <laughs> when it's plugged up, it's got the laptop holder, it's got cord management, batteries, charger, stuff like that, notebook holders, all that good stuff. A magnetic dry erase board. It has a backlight on there, which is super bright. Is this made for this, or is it just like a... This is this is just something we found on Amazon. Because I was looking for something to build my own just like this, and this is... We got this for 150 bucks. And you can just plug it up here in the back. It's got two wall outlets, USB-A, USB-C. Like I said, this is... It's got a, a really bright uh, light in there. Mm -hmm. It's got a headphone holder. I mean, it's just... If you're doing any kind of investigations or work, that would be perfect for like a mobile podcast unit. Oh yeah, yeah man. And see you later. Yeah. All right. Wow. So. What are the chances that a giant storm blows up in the middle of this? Right. <laughs> well, I was going to show my equipment. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've got uh, two different types of thermal imaging cameras. I have one that's a FLIR, and it just plugs into the base of your phone. Mm -hmm. So it's just this little small one, plugs right in the bottom, and you can use your phone as a thermal imaging camera. I've heard of, I've heard of that app before. Yeah, it... yeah. And then, of course, you get your, your handheld ones, the big ones. I got one of those. It's at home. Uh, I've got three night vision cameras. Just you, you can get night vision cameras on Amazon for like 68 bucks. Mm -hmm. There's no sense in spending a fortune for something that's going to work, you know, just for seeing in the dark. Um, I've got the REM pod, which... Actually, 
get you another phone on phone 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 phone, phone, on phone action technology Ooh. Ah. This thing goes nuts last night. Is this here? No, this was at that location I investigated last night. Okay. So it took us a good hour and a half, but we actually did debunk that as, uh, well, partially debunk it. Whenever you're walking across the floor, the vibrations of you walking across the floor would set it off. So I've got an SB11 as well. I got an SB7 and I got an SB11 in the car, but and the only difference in that is just it's got multiple channels and a whole lot bigger. I'm gonna run to a hot spot. It's like we're in a haunted house, but it's actually real. I don't have a crazy guy. Yeah, it's a it's a haunted haunted house. Haunted haunted. And it's, and it's storming, so it's that much creepier. Right. <laughs> so, uh, all that running water is gonna fuel the energy. Yeah. They're gonna have energy to draw from. Oh my gosh. This is so much different now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, once we get on back there, oh, I didn't even set the power, but I'll be oh, hanging. So now, with it raining, it's gonna start flooding up a little bit. But I wanna be quick about it. So. We're doing a hot spot run through with a K2. Brother, I shot it on the wrong angle. That would've pissed me off. <laughs> So this area actually, when we was using the digital K2, uh, or not K2, but the digital EMF, we actually had it spiked up to 198 milligal. Really? Which is just absolutely ridiculous. It made everybody sick. That's the kind of stuff sends people home. Yeah, that kind of exposure, and done that for a good like 20 minutes or so, and it was just that, that high of an EMF rating was making everybody nauseous, sick, headaches, irritable. That's that kind of stuff at Skinwalker that makes everybody get put back on the truck. Yeah. It makes them leave. But normally, this would be a hot spot for the uh, K, uh, the rim pod. K2 is a pin. I just went ahead and left the lights on that way you can see. Well, the rain just turns this place into a different world. Yeah. And the thing about a haunted location that some people forget is if it's haunted, it's going to be haunted day or night. Yeah. Doesn't matter the season, doesn't matter the weather. I've never understood the just at night thing. You can see. Maybe that's called your senses. Maybe it's called your senses. Flooding in. Woo! Yeah. I'm glad I wore my hiking boots. So we will go around in a minute. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. That's a bad design. <laughs> yeah, and every time we get a fix, it breaks. Let's, uh, got yourself a water ghost. Yeah. Oh. All right. So one of our hot spots is, like I said, the morgue. That's where we get a lot of K2 reading. Not a real morgue, but a fake morgue nonetheless. Yeah, it's a fake morgue. Yeah. I got the thing there where I'm going to show you something. I think I might have it to but I don't know. Watch this. Wow. On a mirror. There's... It's metal though behind it, isn't it? It couldn't be... How far around does it go? Uh -oh. Hmm? I said, how far around does the... Uh, like, does it go away? So, it, goes, it stays pretty solid until about right here. Yeah. And then... It just kind of follows this wall. Now, at first, we didn't know because there's no wire here. There's yeah. no wires in Nothing the wall. behind it. The only thing we can think of is like our exit sign that's posted. There's some wires that run up the top border here. Maybe. It's just weird that that mirror is like the central location. Yeah. Like yeah, that's what, I, that's what we can't figure out. And, and it's a yeah. mirror. Okay. We got that exit sign right there. Yeah. And it kind of, it's kind of weird how it does this, like this. I would say that would explain up into there, like down the wall. I yeah. don't know about just the mirror itself being just all the way. Yeah, the, that's the part we noticed. Now right here, we actually, during our investigation, we got an EVP of someone saying Sean, which is one of our actors, 
friggin' and we had it multiple times. Sean! Yeah, and then Sean. Like very loud, very clear. I wanna ask all my people watching it to watch this video and listen for stuff like that. Especially in that rain. That's what they feed off of is those vibrations. They said it's been active all night last night. I'm hoping we can get a little something. Yeah, it'd be cool. Cold like spot. A cold spot, I mean she if there's anyone here with us, we're here to talk to you, we're here to communicate. I've been here more times than you can probably count. <laughs> so, I mean, you know who I am, what I do. This guy's new. He I wants to be freaked out. He wants to be scared. I have good intentions, though. He has good intentions, but give him a good bedlam welcome. Welcome. Show him. Show him what kind of power you got. Exact moment. 8400. So, uh, I try not to dive into politics or anything. We had a dummy right here, and it ironically it was all boarded up, but it looked very, very similar to Joe Biden. And that's what we called it. <laughs> it was, wasn't a Walter from. Walter from uh, oh, Jeff uh, Dunham? Jeff Dunham. No. Uh, well, it's, uh, it could be, I guess. <laughs> this is one of those weird... And also another thing, with, when you're dealing with an intelligent haunting, they kind of can choose whether or not they're going to investigate. Residual, you're going to get something every time. Yeah. They don't, it's just a repeat. They're like a GIF. Yeah. But with an intelligent haunting, it... It gives you activity... When you, when it wants to. Yeah, they had a party here last night. <laughs> Somebody had a good time. They had a party here. That's a residual, that's a big residual drunken. See, and this is another one of those areas where we yeah. get. But you can see how consistent it is. There's some kind of electrical disturbance yeah. there that's probably a wire. I'd be interested to think that maybe it was that uh, border of that mirror causing it to condense a little bit. Might have been, honestly. That's just so, <laughs> the fact that it's a mirror adds to it. We're going to get into the spooky area. It's a little bit dark, so probably going to see there's a great line. This is supposed to be one of the most active areas. So maybe we can get a hit. I'll run into something. There's a pole right here. Well, be my luck, break my leg in a haunted house. <laughs> Pull me out! Like Winston. Ghost see, hunters. With that being open right there, there's a lot of shadow play on the ground. I bet. A blowing thing. Yeah. All these moving around. Like I said, a professional paranormal investigator. Um, okay. Oh, wow. Have we been uh, back here before? Yeah. We just didn't go back in there. That's, okay, that I was going to say, it doesn't look familiar. We're actually, uh, we have one idea to put paintball back there, but unfortunately, we're probably not going to do that just due to the fact that people just don't take a hit like they used to. You get shot with a paintball, you know, back in the day, it's just, ow, and then you shoot a bag. Son now you get shot by a paintball and you can crawl up on the floor and crap. Call the police. Yeah. Call the police. Yeah, Were you playing paintball? Well, yeah, but he wasn't supposed to <laughs> shoot me. Now, the big thing that happens here, especially with the lights off, which, keep in mind, you have placebo effect that can work around yeah. that. Uh, just the sense of being watched. Which even with the lights on, in certain areas you can feel it. Just that sense of being watched, sense of, you know, why are you here? What are you doing in my space? Now, this area is the hot spot for K2, so. Oh, wow. Not be able to get a couple of spikes. I'm gonna lay it down right here. If there's anyone here that would like to talk to us, if you get close to that device on the, on the right here, if you touch it or get real close to it, it'll change colors and light up. Can you make it light up for us? I 
I'll tell you what, about 80% of investigations are just standing here waiting. Mm -hmm. Like a stakeout? Yep. <laughs> well, that's, that's why it's called investigation. Mm -hmm. You know, not hunting. Like a and that's the thing, if, if anybody's interested in learning the difference between ghost hunting and paranormal investigation, if you want to learn how to be a professional paranormal investigator, um, you know, you can go on the Bedlam Paranormal Research Center Facebook page, and, you know, we, we'll post, we have one every month, it's always going to be on Sunday, uh, typically we have the first classes at 1 p.m., the last classes at 5 p.m., and it's only sixty dollars a person. Uh, there is an optional overnight stay till about two in the morning, and things kind of die down around two in the morning. How quiet is the town that time of day? At night? Yeah. Oh, it's just. I'm gonna say it's gonna be stone. No pun intended. It's day quiet. Yeah. Because Scottsboro is Scottsboro dies like at eleven at the latest. Yeah. And that's what's crazy is you know you have. So many haunted locations all throughout here, not just this building, but you know, just Jackson County, you have uh, the whole city or town, not really, the whole town of Bridgeport, Yeah. especially over there at the train bridge and the, the, the bridge that goes across the river. That area is so active. Um, there's a, numerous cemeteries around here, if you like cemetery stuff, that's really, really active. We've got some really good EVPs at locations. Um, and as far as other locations like this, you got uh, South Pittsburgh Hospital. Mm -hmm. um, about three hours from that, you have Harriman Hospital that's starting to get popularity. Was that who introduced me to you as Dave Brogan? Dave Brogan. You know Dave Brogan? Who, I wonder who it was. Roger Williams? Somebody told me your name. That's how I just started looking out. I hmm. think it was South Pittsburgh. At South Pittsburgh? Uh, yeah, he's associated with the guy that runs South Pittsburgh. Oh, uh, Ronnie? I can't think of it. Like, Ronnie's the owner. Yeah, he's one of his friends. Oh, okay. Who told me that? Any lead anybody gives me, I pursue like I'm a crazy high school uh, ex-girlfriend. Yeah. So I don't know who, how I know some people. No, I, remember, I, just, I, I don't remember exactly. I've been to South Pittsburgh twice. Once with my team and then once with some of the... Uh, people who work here, and we've done it twice. There, our most active spot was known as the False Chapel. Yeah. It, was, it, was a one, it was only one way to get into it, one way to get out of it, it's just down some stairs, there was no exit. And uh, we actually got chased out of that room by a shadow figure. Like, it, we physically seen it charging at us and heard it, felt it, that scared us. Um, here, Mostly, it's like I said, especially with the lights off, it's that sense of being watched. It's that you hear the footsteps behind you. Um, there's just an overall feeling of dread. No one can escape. Huh? So no one can escape. You should honestly, you should come uh, do one of our overnights or a class one day. Yeah, the you longer, got a real sense of this. The longer we talk, the more I'm looking into that birthday thing we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, because my birthday is August 6th, and yours is the 7th. Mm -hmm. So I'm having a Bucky's themed birthday party at my mom's house. Okay. Because I'm 40, and I have themed birthday parties. <laughs> ain't that much older than me. Yeah. I'll be 30 in August, so. Where I just came from was by the Moody Brick. I know oh. you're talking about going there. Well, that's where we was at last night. Really? Yeah. Are you getting stuff there? Oh, it was, yeah, we got there. My daughter was 100 yards from you. Oh, wow. She stayed on the that road. Yeah, we had an investigation there last night from 7 p.m. till, I think we stayed until right at 3 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, it started dying down at about 1 in the morning. Call that dude's dog was barking. Yeah. Um, for us, the basement was just super active. Um, There's a lot of rumors that surround it. Yeah. There's bad things that happened, but none of it is true. But uh, I, I told you my entire life I heard about it. I used to be up in there when I was little and yeah. It's just wild. When you said that I was like, holy crap, is this me getting into the movie brick? Yeah, we uh 
I got a contact with the owner, and uh, we went and done an interview with them. You know, let them fill us out. They're real. They're real cool people, but they just they yeah. want to stay off. Nice. The, yeah, they just want to stay off the board. They don't want anybody knowing really about them what they do. They don't want paranormal investigators yeah. there. I don't blame them. Just stir stuff up. Start, exactly. And that's the thing. Ninety percent of people who do ghost hunting or paranormal investigation, they they provocate. They bring Ouija boards. They they try to stir things up instead of just letting it naturally happen. And we don't do that, and that's the only reason we were able to get in. Is we're professionals. We don't. We're not TV ghost hunters. Which can make for a boring watch. Yeah. But it's also the real scientific stuff if it can be called scientific. Yeah. You know, we're not, we're not here to show the world. Oh, all these places are haunted and they're dangerous. And oh, let's see if we can get a demon on us. No, we don't do that. You got real lucky because the last owner would not have let you do that. No. I said that there hasn't been anybody investigate that place in over 40 years. And the fact that we was able to, it was just like, hey, we're not going to disclose. They don't want people there. We're not going to advertise it. All right, Jared, appreciate you uh, letting me come up in here and see all your ghosts. I felt them touching the back of my neck the whole time. Either that or sweat, I don't know. <laughs> One of the two. Yeah, it was real fun. Um, what is your uh, your websites again and your social medias? Uh, so yeah, um, you can go on Facebook. That's basically all I have right now. It's just the Bedlam Paranormal Research Center. It'll be tied in with just the Bedlam Haunted Attraction. Okay. Um, that was the name I got wrong when I drove over here saying it. I just knew it was Bedlam Haunted Scottsboro. Find it it's there. Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, if you go on Google, it's just Bedlam. But um, if you go on Facebook, it's the Bedlam Paranormal Research Center. As far as the ghost parts of it. Um, we have a class every month. Uh, we don't have one once. I think the next one is on July 9th. Is that right? What month is it? June? Yeah, July 9th. It's first like class. Friday or Saturday. Yeah, well, I'll always do them on Sunday. Okay. So. But you, you can go on there. I have it on there. It has an event. If you're interested in going, just let me know. Uh, it's $60 a person. It's the uh, class. It's a big PowerPoint. I go over everything. I, uh, I work real hard to get a degree in paranormal investigations, demonology. And so, what, uh, what institutions you go to? Go through the Rhine? Uh, Paranormal Academy through the UK. Okay. You ever it's, heard of the Rhine? I'm talking about mm. the Rhine. Somebody else, uh, else had one. I wonder if it's the same thing. Oh, Send me a link. Yeah. Um, it's just uh, they you, had the same values you did about being scientific and debunking. Mm -hmm. Debunking first. That was a, that was a big deal. Yeah, it, that, that's the big thing when you're doing an investigation. Do everything you can to find a rational explanation. Mm. And then when you can't find the rational explanation, then you start diving into the paranormal. That's when it gets fun. That, yeah. yeah. That's when it gets scary. This place, it had the feeling of what I felt like a haunted place would feel like. Like not necessarily just like getting pushed or touched or grabbed or hearing EVPs or anything, but like that energy. Mm -hmm. Energy seems like half the battle. It is, and one of the big things that a lot of people who come here struggle with is is that energy. They get really drained. They have uh, intrusive thoughts. We've had people that did an investigation and left, and they got into a car accident just right after. Well, amazing. And be very careful if you do an investigation here. Bad things can happen. We've had I don't know how many times where we had corrupted footage, etc. I fully expect none of this to work though. <laughs> it's, yeah, you never know. it's crazy you say that because my camera died on the way out here. Oh that, yeah, that yeah. had worked for that's fifteen. I, it's old, but it worked today. I tested it. I did thirty minutes of footage on it at my house testing it. I get in my car, you know, about uh, half a mile from the Moody Brick. Boom, dead. Hmm. Didn't work. All right, that's, that's crazy. Well, that I really, I really appreciate it. We'll go ahead and end it. Thanks everybody. Subscribe, BobbyDizzle.com, and this has been Jared Selvage from uh, Bedlam Paranormal Research. All right. Have a good one. See ya. All right, folks, thank you so much for watching this show. We just had, I just had an amazing time at my first potential paranormal investigation for this podcast. And I just want to say I had a good time. Thank you, Jared, for the uh, opportunity to be in there. I can see this being a full time, not a full time job. Well, I just, I do want podcasting to be a full time job. Um, so I can see this being a thing I do in the future. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Please subscribe to the podcast, The Caffeinated Cryptid with Bobby Dizzle. 
this has been me live from Bedlam in Scottsboro, Alabama. Hit that little like button, hit subscribe. Thanks everyone for watching. Bye-bye.